for those of us who are not in any particular moment suffering brain damage or psychiatric ill health we want to understand ourselves better we want to you know we want to live um more meaningful and fulfilling life right so we have a neuroscientific foundation for understanding you know that the self is impermanent that, that everything changes that there's this essential relationship of indirectness between what we experience and what's actually out there the kinds of applications that we see can be divided into different categories the most obvious category is medicine and there are many applications within medicine so some of the applications that already have been developed are methods for diagnosing whether people who have severe brain injury still retain consciousness and there are methods that are being used in the clinic not not every clinic but are being used in some clinics where we don't have to rely on behavior and we can look at brain activity and make a, a good inference about whether somebody is conscious or not and even communicate with them if they are without relying on behavior and this is finding this research is finding that indeed there are some people who are still conscious who would have been missed without these methods and we now know and this is much this is very important for how we treat them and you know all the ethics surrounding them and and um and for communication with them as well so there's there's lots of that's one i think dramatic example of where it's already having an impact there are other fields of medicine where it will have strong impacts as well especially in psychiatry and this is again is already happening and now there are ways of understanding and this is you know, part of the work i'm i'm doing is trying to understand for example how different kinds of hallucination happen you know, in terms of what's going on in 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 the brain specifically mm -hmm. about the kind of experience that, that that it leads to not what behavior i end up doing and this is giving us insight into why people with say parkinson's disease have different kinds of hallucinations from people with psychosis consciousness research is adding a whole new dimension to how do we leverage the tools that we've got to to understand the specific mechanisms that give rise to different experiences one of the things i'm working on hard at the moment is this project called the perception census it's a citizen science project where we're trying to understand how people perceive the world differently. Um, you know, we all, it seems as though we see the world just as it is, but of course we don't. We see it as we are. You know, our brains create our experiences. They're not, they're related to the world, but they're not the same as the world, even though it seems like that. And I think this is really important to know. And I think it's, you know, that's a scientific challenge. It's also a a trans. It has implications because it it allows us to recognize that we do see things differently. There are other ways of seeing things, and that can help develop platforms for communication, empathy, understanding, accommodating people with neurodivergent conditions. All these sorts of things. There's the applications in the law as well, when we understand the basis of free will and voluntary behavior. You know, we have to change our legal practice. When do we hold people responsible? There's many applications for animal welfare. The more that we understand about how widespread conscious experience is beyond a human, you know, we have to think about, are we, we know we're not treating other animals the way we should, but you know, we have more information now about how to you know, how to do that and that's again there's been changes so in in the eu there's been legal changes about how octopuses can be treated primarily because of research indicating that that octopuses are likely to to feel things yeah. um so that's a huge implication mm -hmm. implications um and then also for ai big implications in ai 
um, very kind of some subtle ones, not necessarily the sort of science fiction Terminator things like we're going to build conscious robots that are going to take over the world, but more subtle ones about what are the influence, what's the influence of AI on our on our perceptions and our decision making. You know, how do our ex how does human experience of interacting with AI how does that affect our own conscious experiences? Uh, but then yes, indeed, there's like what will society be like if we build machines that appear to be conscious even though we know they're not i mean that's going to be very disruptive for society and ultimately there's this idea of building ai that is actually conscious i think this is very far away but it, it's we still have to worry about it because it would be ethically very disastrous indeed because we create a whole new um arena for potential suffering so anyway, there's lots, there's a huge number of ways in which consciousness research gets out of the lab and, and into the wild, into society. And it's not surprising because it's fundamentally about us, you know, living creatures, human beings and other living creatures. And um, it's so it will affect many dimensions of our lives. <laughs>